So I guess by now you guys have all seen the new Generation 9 Pokemon. I'm completely obsessed. I think the little cat one, Sprigatito, is the cutest ever. I'm completely obsessed with how Twitter has just gone completely insane with weed cat images and cartoons and everything. I love it. So I decided today, instead of doing Clip Studio tutorials, we're going to take a little bit of a break and we're going to do something fun that I wanted to do, which is draw all three of the Generation 9 starters. Of course, we have to start with Sprigatito, who's adorable. That's what I'm sketching on screen right now is sort of like my version of the little weed cat Pokemon. She's a grass type cat Pokemon. She's a foot and four inches tall and only nine pounds, which means basically my Maine Coon could eat her for breakfast. <laughs> so tiny, what a little baby. This one is Fue Coco. It's a little like crocodile guy. Like he's like a little spicy pepper crocodile, which is, I'm dying, it's so cute. I love his little face and his weird little teeth so much. As a tiny little Clip Studio aside right here, did you guys know that Clip Studio got a liquify tool recently? It's tucked in the blend tools in case you're looking for it. We'll have to do a little bit of a quick tips. But it's so freaking smooth and it doesn't lag on my iPad hardly at all. It's absolutely amazing to use. That was like the one thing from um, Photoshop that I was really, really missing. And now it's here. I'm so excited. It's so good. I wanted to make this little Fue Coco like kind of, I don't know, like a little bit more like devious, even though he's supposed to be kind of like chill and easygoing. I wanted him to be kind of like spicy because he's like a little pepper. So I wanted him to be like a little spicier and also kind of a chunko because he's a dense little dude. He's a foot four inches and he's like 26 pounds. So he's like a very dense little guy. So I kind of made him like a little, little chonker with some wrinkles, like some little wrinkly bits. So the last one is Quaxley, which is kind of tied for my fave. I don't know. They're, they're all three of them very, very cute, but Quaxley is also freaking adorable. Um, I don't normally like ducks very much because I have a love hate relationship with all types of large birds. Um, but I thought that Quaxley was pretty cute and I thought that he would look really cute as kind of like a villain a little bit because he's got that like dope pompadour, which is honestly kind of amazing. So I wanted to make him like a little bit like it's Quaxley, but he's a little evil, like a little evil ducky. He's the tallest one. I think he's only getting away with tallest because of his giant hair. But he's a foot and eight inches and he's like 13 pounds. So he's kind of like in the middle, but tall of the other two. I think that when I looked at the design, I decided he maybe could be a little bit fluffier too. So that's kind of, I gave him like fluffy, fluffy baby duck feathers. Cause he's supposed to be kind of like a little duckling. This is the part where like his expression just gets kind of like villainous. <laughs> We can't see his other eye, which is kind of character design speak for like, it's not a good guy. <laughs> Here goes the inks. I'm using the distressed. Oh, I can't even remember. It's like distressed inker or something from the rusty nib true grit texture supply brush set. Not an ad. I bought them. I love them. That's like seriously the only ink set that I use anymore because they're all kind of amazing and there's such a different array of texture you can get just in that one set. There's a ton of brushes. I've kind of like segmented off my very, very favorite ones into like its own little sub tool on clip. I wanted to give Spiritito like a little bit creepier of a face cause she's supposed to be kind of like capricious and she's supposed to have kind of like, she'll kind of just turn on you on like a dime. <laughs> So I wanted her to seem kind of like a little bit less trustworthy. The, the original one is like very baby. Like she's very like cute and innocent and sweet and has giant ears and giant eyes. I wanted mine to just be like a little bit more like, can you trust this cat though? Cause maybe you can't. Don't ever trust the cat. <laughs> 
I can tell you from experience. I live with two of them. They're not trustworthy. <laughs> and of course, we got to have that big puffy tail. So cute. I also just really wanted to make sure that you could see the fangs because she has little fangs, but they're so like under exaggerated in the original design. I was like, she could have evil or bigger, like more vicious looking fangs, I think, and still be cute. I forgot to sketch in the, the neck floofs. So I had to kind of go back and add that in after. I also forgot uh, Foy Coco's little like craft single cheese square. <laughs> we have no idea what that's supposed to be. I made it into like a little bit of like armor plating that looks kind of like the tummy of a crocodile a little bit because he's supposed to be a little spicy crocodile. So that's kind of where I went with it. But in the original design, it just kind of looks like maybe it's a cheese. I'm sure you guys have seen that meme already that he has a cheese on him. I also didn't go with like the same pose really for any of these because I wanted to see like just a slightly different angle. So he's not screaming like he is in the original <laughs> drawing. He's sort of uh, just sort of chilling. He's definitely supposed to be like a little vibey crocodile, which is hilarious. He's spicy, but, but vibey. He does everything in his own time. So says the Pokedex entry. I always get so excited when they release a new generation of Pokemon. I know we've done this like nine times now, but it just kind of gives me that really familiar kind of nostalgic Pokemon Game Boy Color vibe every time, even though I know like we're not playing on Game Boy Color anymore. It's not cute like pixel art and there's all of these other aspects to the game now. It still just kind of gives me that feeling every time. It was so fun to see a bunch of other artists on Twitter kind of having the same feelings about it and everybody was just like, yep, we have to draw the new Pokemon because they're adorable and Pokemon reasons. <laughs> My first Pokemon game was Pokemon Red, I think. I bought a Game Boy Color from a game. Like, I don't think it was even a GameStop. I think it was like a, a gaming, like a secondhand gaming store in the mall um, when I was in college because I didn't have game systems when I was a kid. I just kind of remember sitting in the in the gym with all my friends. We had snow where I grew up and so we would have a snow day. We wouldn't be allowed to go out for recess or like lunch. Everybody would bring in their Game Boys the year that red and blue were really popular. And I just got to see everybody playing these games, like running through the grass and finding new Pokemon and battling the gym leaders and all of these like Poke stops and stores. And it was all just so magical to me because I'd never played any other video games before. And I remember a couple of friends would like let me borrow it for a few minutes to just kind of run around and like do dumb stuff, but they didn't really want to let me mess up their whole like team because I couldn't play any video games. So they would just kind of park me at the beginning of the game and let me run around in the grass. And like, that's my favorite Pokemon memory is just running around at the very beginning of the game, trying to find your first like starter Pokemon and then just kind of grinding those first little like levels. I have since played Pokemon Gold and Silver, as well as kind of coming back to Red and Blue a couple of times with emulators. We had it on our jailbroken Wii for a little while, which was excellent. It's honestly kind of amazing on the big screen. <laughs> to go from such a tiny st screen on the Game Boy to like a TV is absolutely ridiculous. It was never meant to be played like that, and I love it. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Gold and Silver is it's in color, number one. <laughs> but also the sprites are so funny. They're so cute when they're just the, like the zoomed out view, not the like battle view, but when you see them kind of sitting places like in cities and in like the Poké Daycare and stuff like that, they're so funny because it's all just teeny tiny little pixel art sprites. One of the first games that I got for my Nintendo Switch was Pokemon, I think I got Shield. And then um, my partner got sword so we could have all of the different like Pokemon. It was so fun to play in those giant open world areas. I like didn't even want to do any of the quests or anything. I just wanted to mess around in the open world area because it had kind of like an upscaled version of that grassy area vibe for me. It was also so fun to see the redesigned versions of 
Pokemon that I've seen before and the little like sheep one that they did. And it was all sort of like British Isles themed. It, oh, it was so cute. The whole thing was so cute. That sheep though, I pretty much just bought the game for that sheep. I haven't played the brand new one that just came out a little while ago yet. Um, I've heard a lot of things about it just being like hideous. <laughs> Really fun, the gameplay is supposed to be amazing, but like everything looks really garbage, which is part of what I like about the Pokemon games. I like when they're super cute, so I just sort of avoided that one. <laughs> we'll have to see if Pokemon Scarlet and Violet look more like, I guess it's called like Ar Arcus? Arceus, or if they look more like Sword and Shield. I'll definitely get it if it looks more like Sword and Shield because that game was adorable. Hopefully they'll do a good job for these little guys, because these are super cute. I love these new starters. When I first started streaming on Twitch, we did a whole night of Pokemon doodles and people could get on and request their favorite Pokemon. It quickly devolved into madness and <laughs> ended up being like Pokemon plus something else. And I would end up doing all of these different like uh, mix and matches and sort of like mixables. It was very, very silly. <laughs> there are some heavily cursed Pokemon in there for sure, but there were also some really, really cute ones. It was fun to kind of get back to that, get back to kind of drawing Pokemon again and, and doing like a little cute kind of creepy version of these. I think I kind of want to do more of these too. I have a lot of Pokemon that I think could use this sort of glowy rendered treatment that would be really, really adorable. I'll have to go back through those little doodles and kind of pick some favorites to do because that would be really fun. I also had a, a little series I was working on in the first couple of months when I got my tablet that were sort of cursed Pokemon. So they were regular Pokemon, but I had kind of like witchy gothified them and they were <laughs> really, really cute. So there's a redraw coming of those in the future at some point. But I think I kind of want to like expand that series a little bit too and do some more of them because I only have two redraws right now. It would be fun to do a couple of more of those and, and expand the set a little bit. I also think my very favorites from Gen 1, like the ghost Pokemon, um, could really use this, this sort of rendered treatment. I think that would be really fun. Let me know in the comments which of those you think would make for fun videos. I think this little Foy Coco looks so cute with the little like leaf on his head instead of those weird, weird stem things. Also, I did turn his little craft single into like little crocodile armor plates. And I think that uh, that looks really cute too. <laughs> he looks a little bit more like dino-y than I wanted, but that's okay. I think that's probably just his little like spiky paw things. I still think he looks really cute. I did some kind of like warm lighting on top of him and it kind of washed out his like red base tone. So you'll kind of see me at the end adjust that little red tone a little bit brighter so he doesn't look so brown. I also wanted him to have kind of like maybe he's standing in some lava or something. So he's got kind of a little red edge light, which I think turned out really cute. I should have done probably edge lighting on the other two as well, but this was the one that I did it on. <laughs> also, I always mess around with the, the like highlights so much. You'll see all three of these. I just kind of like fuss with the, with the highlights forever. These like little scale things turned out so cute, but then I felt like they were a little, they were kind of taking over. There's the color adjustment. I probably should have got a little bit more red. That's okay. He still looks like a little chili pepper. He's still spicy. Now for Quaxley's shadows and highlights. I really did just kind of lean into Quaxley being kind of like a little bit villainous with this pompadour. <laughs> I don't know why I just assumed that he's like the duck mob boss or something. <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> I did really love how all three of these turned out though. So well worth it, I think, to kind of lean into the, the creepy cute aspects of all of these. I also really like how all of his 
all of his like base colors are kind of a tone of blue. Like even his yellow beak looks a little bit greener. I think that's really interesting and, and looks really nice. Oh, maybe I did edge like this. I can't remember if I put, I maybe put like a little blue glow under him. Like he was like standing next to some water or something. It's a mystery. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, I definitely did. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> So Sprigatito's the only one that didn't get like a weird under lighting effect. That's okay. Sprigatito still looks really cute. He looks so smug. I love it. And so fluffy. Oh, I gotta get his little W on his on his pompadour. <laughs> I abstracted it a little bit so it looks a little bit more like a uh, shine. And there they are. There's the new starters. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see them in action. I think they're going to be really fun. I love all the like speculation that's been going down about what their evolutions are going to look like. Some of it is absolutely ridiculous. If you guys haven't seen the drawfy where they draw some evolved forms of these, definitely worth a watch. So funny. I hope you guys enjoyed this little Pokemon related interlude and story time. Let me know if you want to see some more of these videos. I would totally be down to make some more. And we'll see you guys next time. If you're looking for some more content like this, check out my video on my first digital art redraw. Also check out my recent videos on correction layers and my custom Clip Studio Paint setup. This video is brought to you by my amazing patrons, Anthony Jutz, Jesse C, and Tara Billy Jean. Thank you so much, you guys, for supporting all of my projects and my YouTube channel on Patreon. And thank you guys for watching all the way to the very end. If you'd like to support my work, you can support through Patreon or on Instagram or Twitter. Please like and subscribe here on YouTube for more videos like this.